Hi, good afternoon. Markin, the dentist. Um, and today uh, I am going to show you something about digital dentistry. Uh, I mobilized myself to uh, record um, a little longer episode uh, about uh, digital dentistry. Um, but um, I have a feedback uh, from uh, everybody who is watching uh, my episodes that mm, you liked uh, this um, dental um, MacGyver series of mine. Uh, so answering your questions, yes, I am going to uh, continue with it. And yes, I will try to show you also some easier things uh, to um, about uh, rubber dam, gingivectomy and what other else you would like to see. Uh, so much more tips and tricks in daily practice that you can use to make your life easier. But today, as promised, Mm, digital dentistry and uh, mesh mixer step by step in which I will try to uh, show you how to create uh, and design a screw retained implant crown uh, and let's call it like this individual healing abutment that you can 3d print by yourself and and use uh, very easily in fact, it took me about half an hour, so let's start. Here we go. Uh, okay, we start from the moment that we ended um, on the previous video. So if you haven't seen it, uh, you uh, need to see what I did. But in fact, here we have our model with um, created digitally emergence profile. Uh, with position of our implant exported from Blue Sky Plan, uh, we all uh, we you can uh, do it all in Blue Sky Plan and export it to to Mesh Mixer. And I have um, aligned uh, those position of implant with uh, scanned on my uh, laboratory scanner uh, abutment and T base. Mm. But in fact, you don't need to scan it by yourself. You can use um, STL file that you can get from the manufacturer of your implant or uh, your dental company who provides uh, something like this. Uh, so first step here is to, um, uh, to choose our um, emergence profile with a select tool with our brush. Then we have to uh, smooth the border by clicking B on our keyboard. And uh, here we go with our emergence profile uh, chosen um, as you can see um, here. Then we will separate from our model and copy uh, to use it as a, another object. Uh, so uh, here I I think I already skipped separating or I was trying a different function. It doesn't matter. Yes, here I am going to separate it from the model. Then I will copy it and I will use this emergence profile as a mm, new object uh, to design uh, on the beginning an individual healing abutment or individual abutment as you would like to um, call it. Uh, when I got it copied, I check if everything's fine, so it's not a part of the process of designing. I just adjust the model to see better. And now, as I told you, I am going to use those copied emergence profile and I will use a function called extrude I was checking something out okay 
I got this object chosen and I use the function extrude and by changing the offset I will just move this um, emergence profile a little down to let's call it uh, push our gingiva and uh, then by uh, choosing a sculpt um, tool and smoothing shrink smooth adjusting uh, the size of my brush I will adjust um, the bottom of abutment to my t-base by removing the excess of the material here uh, when I take too much I can uh, go back uh, to repair it or like here so by pressing ctrl z I go back and I start over by cha changing uh, the size and the strength of my brush and uh, I adjust it uh, until I think it's perfect it's good and I think um, that when I am done with it I will be able to uh, use um, transform function to uh, elongate the top of this abutment to make it fitable to my t-base so um, you will see on the next video just like here uh, by uh, just like here by um, choosing select function I will mark the top of the emergence profile I will use transform function or pressing T on my keyboard I will elongate the top of the abutment and then by uh, choosing uh, the plane cut function I will remove uh, the part that is uh, not necessary for me so I will adjust um, this plane uh, to the height of uh, my t-base uh, I will change the angle direction to make it fit perfectly um, if it will not work uh, by first time I will go back and uh, do it a little better so I change the direction the angle I look at it from uh, different angles to um, to see uh, whether position is the best for me as I told you on the beginning I will not skip those boring parts of those movies because I want to show you uh, how really uh, long uh, time takes to design implant crown screw retained uh, in, in mesh mixer so here we go with our abutment it is ready no it's not ready uh, it's just need uh, one more adjustment of height so I will go back and I will use plain cut function again make it a little higher higher little different angle as you can see here okay so I had to make it uh, higher and over of, over my t-base so this will cause me to do something um, else uh, on the next step so as you can see uh, I will use uh, my um, sculpt brush and by uh, draw function and pressing control on my keyboard I will remove uh, the excesses of material here uh, to expose the margin of my t-base uh, which will help me uh, to after that use my boolean difference function uh, to 
make an object which uh, will be as it is called in the name of the function the difference between two objects which is abutment and designed by me emergence profile uh, and this object in fact will be my individual healing abutment but to do it correctly i have to um, uh, expose uh, the uh, margins of uh, the T base here to really have a difference and to have a two objects and remember it's important always to work on your copies so every step you uh, think is fine you the best what you can do is to copy it and to work on the copy uh, so if you make a mistake uh, on the next step you won't have to start over okay so now we choose two objects, uh, which is abutment uh, plus analog and um, my object called here as model part, but in fact it is our individual abutment. We choose those two objects and by using boolean difference function, we will get our individual abutment, but with something inside it which uh, what we will have to remove so by uh, clicking twice the select on the top and of the bottom of this object as you can see right here select twice on the top twice on the bottom delete on the keyboard and we remove an object that we don't want to have and when we visual, visualize um, the abutments uh, underneath uh, our individual abutment we will see that it fits uh, perfectly one to each other now it is time to design the crown so as i showed on the first video we choose um, the crown of the tooth that we want to use by using a select function uh, so we have to choose it as uh, good as we can um, and then we copy this diff uh, we take it of the model and uh, by using transform function or pressing T on the keyboard then uh, by clicking twice on the border uh, we choose the border of our crown just like here uh, didn't work so I have to do it again better okay we can smooth our border by pressing B but we don't have to in this case and then pressing T uh, to transform the border and we extrude the border and and again by using so as you can see we are using always the same functions here the plane cut uh, to uh, cut and the excesses of, of the crown the parts that we don't need okay uh, again we adjust the height the angle and everything to uh, make our crown fit uh, to our abutment as good um, as possible uh, I hoped it uh, the program will close it by itself but it hasn't so I will use inspector function to flat close uh, the bottom of my crown and then I will use uh, the mirror function uh, in edit area to create the mirror reflection of uh, my crown which will give me a possibility to have a um, crown uh, of the teeth on the other side uh, the mirror function always uh, creates one object so we have to mark the object that we need and separate from the object uh, which we used on the beginning we can copy it uh, just for safety uh, and then we move our crown 
uh, over the model and over our abutment uh, and we adjust its position, its height, its size, uh, its angulation, contact points, everything uh, on this um, moment that we need to, to fit our crown. Uh, in fact, uh, this uh, was uh, immediate crown, which I will um, um, put in the patient's mouth uh, in disclosure, so um, I don't care about the occlusion here, so that's why I don't uh, fit it to the opposite model, but in fact you can easily do it but it's not um, the aim of this episode and then when I got it positioned I use a sculpt and pinch function to uh, adjust one object to the other uh, it's not a, a perfect fit, fit right now but uh, we will deal with it on the next steps uh, it I just want to uh, fit one margin to, to the other. Um, okay, we go around uh, the crown, as you can see. And in fact, we got uh, our first version, first version of our a screw retained implant crown. If we do something wrong, we can go back and, and start over as you can see here. But everything I do here is uh, with um, this sculpt uh, brush, uh, maybe with draw function, maybe with smooth function. I adjust it to look mm, as good as possible. Maybe not perfect, but um, as I told you, it's just a immediate crown here. So I think it does not matter so much. Uh, all the mistakes I try to correct. Mm, our next step will be to combine those two objects. So we will have to mark them both. And when we do it, we will choose our combine function to make it one. So here is first object, here is second. We mark them both and we choose combine. We get one object, which is our crown with our abutment uh, on the bottom. Uh, but uh, still, this crown is impossible to be screwed to our implant. So we have to design our screwing channel and this will be mm, the next step. So basically what we are going to do so, uh, is to, uh, that we will take our object and we will use the function called make solid to make it one solid object um, and after that when it is solid so in uh, edit we choose make solid and this function always take a um, long time and in fact i always change this uh, solid accuracy and mesh density uh, to make uh, our crown more accurate uh, to the firstly designed object. Uh, so the software always needs uh, some time to calculate it. It takes a long time sometimes. It depends on um, how fast is your computer. So don't worry if um, it takes sometimes a long time. Uh, but it can cause, as you will see in the next step, that uh, sometimes your software can crash. So this is why it is important to uh, save your work every step. Okay, now uh, we take our object, which is solid, solid object, and uh, I uh, marked, let's say, the upper half of it 
and I will divide it into two pieces. Uh, so I will separate this part uh, to have uh, my abutment and my uh, crown separately. Uh, somebody talked to me so I got uh, stopped for a moment. Okay, we got it divided. As you can see, this is the bottom and I will uh, choose the border of the channel and again transform function by pressing T on my keyboard and I will try to elongate this channel, this screwing channel. I have to mark it again because I did something wrong. Okay. And I elongate the screwing channel uh, and I want it to uh, reach over the occlusal surface, but not too high. So I am adjusting it at uh, it as good as possible right here. Uh, and this is our screwing channel. But as you can see, we are unable to uh, screw uh, the crown to the implant for it because it's closed by our uh, occluded surface. So we will have to remove it. Uh, and uh, the easiest way is to choose a uh, select brush to adjust its size and to mark the occlusal surface inside the screwing channel as you can see and remove it and as you can see we have a part on the bottom of the crown which uh, is uh, closing uh, the screwing channel so we will have to remove it mm. so to do it we will have to uh, make um, the abutment uh, non-visible just like here and by choosing um, I check if it's really the part of the uh, crown okay so by using a select function double click on this part and pressing delete on my keyboard I remove it fast and easy and now we got our screwing channel open. Uh, so now it is time to uh, remove the excesses of the screwing channel. So we mark all the area that is over the occlusal surface and we try to do it as much accurate as, as we can because if we will do some mistakes uh, uh, the software won't be able to uh, calculate perfectly and as you will see when I will uh, make solid this part uh, some errors will, will occur so I will have, uh, will have to deal with them on the next step uh, but I decided not to uh, cut it out from the movie because uh, you will be also able to see how to deal with uh, some problems that you can uh, meet on your designing process. So as you can see I was not too accurate by cutting it maybe as you can see here I removed those areas too much and this caused uh, trouble for me during uh, making solids of uh, this part because uh, my screwing channel was closed again and I had to um, do uh, cutting out again but uh, it just wasted two minutes of my life so I decided to, to show you how to do it okay I combine those two objects again so I mark them both and I use combine function so we got one object and now we are going or I am going because <laughs> you are not working maybe you are uh, I am going to make it solid 
uh, and uh, on this moment you will see why I uh, think that it is good option to uh, save your work every step you do because uh, right about uh, now in a couple of seconds um, the software will crash and I was very close to uh, lose uh, everything I did but luckily it was saved in um, my um, memory uh, not my memory but, but in memory of the computer so as you can see now it crashed then so I had to to start over but uh, when I started uh, mesh mixer um, again it allowed me to to restore my work so uh, I did not lose uh, what I did but I had to repeat this step again uh, so it is also included in designing process uh, okay so we got one object right now and we uh, are going to to make it solid so I did make solid let software to do some calculations Okay, we got the first version almost ready. It is solid. And now I will adjust solid accuracy and mesh density. And again, I will wait until the software will calculate. And sometimes it is a good moment to, to change your project because if you had if you have um, too much objects open in your mesh mixer um, your computer uh, can start to work uh, a little slowly uh, and um, it makes me anxious I don't know how about you but I don't like my computer to work slow so sometimes I start over uh, only with this one object I am trying to um, to prepare. Okay, so as you can see, I was not so accurate and uh, the software closed my screwing channel. So I will have to um, cut it out. But it is easy. Select function, adjust at the size of the brush. I mark it and then press delete on the keyboard if it is cutting uh, too much like here I go back I mm, mark a little less area and I cut uh, out again um, because I want to mm, have um, as much holes as possible uh, so if I will use uh, inspector function it will be able to close mm, those um, areas uh, so our crown is almost ready our individual abutment is almost ready screwing channel is open we choose inspector to uh, to close the mm, hole and the last one and to repair uh, some mistakes that could occur during designing process it's pretty easy just uh, press those uh, points and software will do the rest um, okay uh, and uh, the last step is to adjust uh, everything uh, so all you need to do here is to use a sculpt brush uh, adding smoothing pinching everything you need uh, just play with it to to see how they work uh, I started by smoothing the screwing channel borders here not to leave them mm, so angulous here um, this is the boring part 
but as I promised, I won't uh, I won't skip it and to really prove that uh, designing of uh, screw retained implant crown in mesh mixer takes only half an hour and just like here and the different function uh, shrink smooth uh, changing strength changing size of the brush everything you need you are adjusting uh, on this uh, step uh, and uh, you design the final crown that you will after 3d printing uh, provide to your patient okay uh, so we got the screwing channel almost ready and now it is time uh, on uh, different uh, not different but on the last um, last preparations uh, and adjustments I marked something wrong okay so we have our crown uh, fitted on our uh, t-base which is screwed to our implant analog mm, right here you can see the screw through the channel okay I think we can go with our final smoothing of the crown so I hope it was not uh, too complicated because it is really not because I am as I told you on the first episode I am not the guy who uh, work in a uh, mesh mixer on my daily basis so if I can do it uh, in the half hour you also can and that's it for today I hope it will be useful uh, as I promised on the next and upcoming episodes I will go with my dental MacGyver but I will also continue with this digital stuff mm, but uh, I think now I will go with uh, comparing intraolar scanners and uh, showing you how to design some mm, more complicated uh, stuff so take care have a nice day and see you next time Bye.